Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to find out a little bit about something called a backlist and why it's important to have one. So anyway, the term backlist comes out of publishing. In publishing, instead of four seasons, there's really only three. There is the winter, the spring, and the fall. And the spring season lasts all the way to the fall. And it's really long, okay? What you end up having is when you release a book and it's in that season. So let's say you release a book in the spring. It's front list until the fall. Once fall hits, that title becomes back list, okay? And your new books that you're going to be putting out become front list titles, and they stay that way until the next season. So even though the spring season's really long, it's like six months compared to the three-month fall and the three-month winter, they stay front list until the next season starts. Now, with writers and authors and stuff, that kind of becomes more of a... It's the same idea, it's the same theory, but the wording's a little bit different. So they call it like a back catalog. Like, oh, what's in your back catalog? Something like that. And again, that term could be used for publishers as well. You know what I'm saying? And why this is important, like for me, for instance, I had this with my, my serials, I had it with my novels, and now I have it with my chapbooks, where every time I put out a new chapbook, okay, Poems about out now. Every time I put out a new chapbook, all my other titles start to sell. Okay? So, for instance, whenever I have a new release, I will sell 10 to 20 of those. Like, the first couple weeks that they're out. And then they kind of plateau and kind of bottom out and, you know, whatever. Wait. So, people come to my shop or people order through Patreon or people hit me up directly and order through me, and they'll want, like, the new chapbook, okay? And so they buy the new chapbook. They put it in their cart. But most of the orders I get off of anywhere, even when I had my own shop, most of the orders I get, it's someone buying the new book, and then maybe an issue or two with the blood rag and one or two other chapbooks, Every once in a while, I'll get someone who buys, like, five to six at once, okay? And maybe even, like, a paperback on top of it. My backlist titles carry about half of my business. And some months when the front list title I have isn't very strong, my backlist completely carries me that month. And most publishing houses... Their backlist is what carries them. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just important to have this. Now, when I was selling mainly ebooks on Amazon, when I would put out like the new Hank Bradshaw book, and I've talked about this before, when um, Dead Dame Curse came out, when that book came out, the other three Hank Bradshaw books started selling again. Dead Dame Walking, Dead Dame in a Trunk, Dead Dame on a Floor. All those books started selling again because the new book came out. I was promoting the new book, so interest was pushed towards that series. Something else that happens that isn't um, as prevalent as that, like it, it's not as um, huge, of a, it's not as big of a deal, is when the Hank Bradshaw book came out, all my books ticked up, like most of them. There, there were like the horror ones didn't, but like the Black Star Canyon books ticked up. I mean, the Brain Thief, the, the Zombie Zero books, those books ticked up, you know? And just like when I put out the Test Subject Alpha book, all the, the three prior Zombie Zero books ticked up. So like the Brain Hunter, the Zombie Hunter, and the Hunted Hunter. Whenever you put something out, it draws attention to the rest of your catalog. And it typically, especially if you're doing a series, those books take off. And now what you have is since 2012, like I was talking about, most indie authors, most self-published authors, they 
specifically try to write in a series in order to keep things moving because that's what worked. And so that's what everyone tells you to do. Um, series sell. You have to keep things in a series. People like a series. And there is some truth to that. There's, there's a lot of truth to it. It's not absolute, but there is a lot of truth in that. But when you get picked up by a big publisher, okay, and you sell well, your gold mine is the fact that you have a back catalog that you self-published, that you have all these other books ready to go. The whole reason why this topic came up is because I was talking to Jessica Fields on an episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. During this part of the conversation, um, and one other part on the episode, the audio got really bad, and so it, like you couldn't really make out what was happening, and when I tried to just put the parts in that were coherent, the whole thing just sounded ridiculous and it didn't make any sense, but I wanted to do this. But when you have that back catalog, and the publisher who's publishing your book right now is like, wow, like we have a cash cow here, can we tie up the rights to all your other books? That puts you at such a huge negotiating advantage. And you could end up making a lot of money even on books that you already thought you've cycled out of. You know what I'm saying? So having like a bunch of stuff is really beneficial to you. And if you have a fan base that is loyal to you, and I'm probably going to do another video about loyal fan bases because that was something else that we were talking about and we didn't get to finish the whole thing. It's really beneficial to have a lot of stuff coming out. Not to take advantage of the people who are buying your stuff, but because you actually have people who give a shit and want to buy your stuff, you know? And if people are willing to depart with their cash to support you and like be excited about the cool new stuff you're putting out and love your work, then that's great, you know? Just know that like having a back catalog or a backlist of your own stuff is crucial and if you're selling stuff on your own the the longer that you do this the easier it becomes to make enough money to like sustain yourself because you have all of those other books that people who like your shit will end up filtering through and into that like ten dollar sale you just made to somebody through a great piece of marketing you did is going to turn into a $50 sale because of all the extra stuff they're going to get. And if that person likes that stuff, that's a, a reoccurring customer, a returning customer who's going to come back and start picking up all your old stuff and your new stuff as it comes out. I just know a lot of people who kind of hang on to stuff and then they'll put stuff out and then they take it down. And like they, they're like, yeah, I just don't want this out anymore, you know. And you know, artistic in integrity, you know, it's great if that's what you want to do. But just know that if you have a hungry fan base, they will buy your stuff. If they like it, they will continue to buy your stuff. So make it easy for them. Don't make it hard for them. You know what I'm saying? So whatever. So hopefully this was interesting and informative. Again, poems about f***ing. Go out and get it now at my Etsy shop, along with all my other stuff. I have stuff on Amazon, too, you can find. Just go to IHateMountWall.com. So keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.